The Lerna is one of the great rivers of Siberia. It measures 4,400 kilometers in length, which makes it the 11th longest in the world and third in Russia, behind the Ob and the Moor. With an area of two and a half million square kilometers, France, Spain, and all the Eastern European states put together could fit well within the territory of the Leander Basin. Even today, the Leana remains unspoiled by hydroelectric dams and other hydraulic structures. The landscapes in the river's basin remain untouched by man, and these areas have rightly been assigned as World Heritage Sites. Their aesthetic value grows with each passing year as its tourist routes expand. We will travel to one of the most unique and beautiful natural settings along the river's middle course. This great Siberian river had already been discovered by the beginning of the 17th century. The Cossacks searched for it under the leadership of Vasily Burg in 1628, and they were the first to reach the Lena River. After that, Pyotr Beketov took his crew on a voyage. Travelling downstream, they established a base known as the Yakut Fortress on the right bank of the river, in 1632. The town of Yakutsk soon became the main starting point for explorers during the Age of Discovery. Today, Yakutsk is the capital of the Republic of Sakha, otherwise known as Yakutia. It is a modern and beautiful city located on permafrost, where the population of around 300,000 people. The city of Yakutsk is a large administrative, scientific and cultural centre in the largest part of Russia. This modern city is located on the left bank of the river. It was moved to a higher bank to avoid flooding during the spring ice drifts. The life and rhythm of Yakutsk is entirely entwined with the river. There is no railway in Yakutsk, and the few existing roads are not able to solve all the transport problems in the area. As a result, the main transportation of goods and passengers is carried out along the Lena River and its tributaries. At all times of the year, the river remains a transport highway for the residents of the city, connecting remote areas with the urban centre.
Locals await the early stages of the ice drift in Yakutsk with caution. This is the most exciting sight in nature, but also the most disturbing time for the local population. Siberian rivers are characterized by the fact that they flow from south to north. While spring is in full swing in the Siberian south, there may still be frost in the north. Meltwater and ice have nowhere to go. Their movement is hindered by the thick ice that constrains the lower reaches of the river. Ice drift on the Lena River near Yakutsk usually begins in the second half of May. Every day the water fills the river leading to the formation of shore ice. The river water level increases and the first movements of ice begin. First, the ice fields begin to move. It grows and breaks into smaller pieces, creating ice blockages for many meters along the banks of the river. Gradually, the ice shell collapses and ice begins drifting down the river. People come to see this spectacular show, arrange picnics for themselves, and just enjoy the occasion. Spring ice drift on the Lerner is very powerful and is often accompanied by large ice jams or blockages. Water begins to rapidly accumulate at these ice jams and flood the lower riverbanks. Sometimes the water rises too quickly, flooding villages in a matter of hours, and emergency responders then arrive to the scene to rescue people. People are sometimes temporarily evacuated to nearby villages by helicopter and the ice blasting specialists are called in to break up the ice jams. Their work will determine how quickly people can return to their homes. A week after the start of the ice drift, individual ice flows are already floating down the river. River vessels, barges and ferries then rush out to the open water. The most profitable time for them has begun. You need to hurry and cannot waver, otherwise the river water level will drop and it will then be impossible to get to the remote villages. Navigation on the Lena lasts three to four months. During this time, river workers manage to transport thousands of tons of food and cargo over a great distance to the farthest corners of Yakutia. With the beginning of the river navigation season, the main tourist season begins. One of the most popular tours among residents of Yakutsk and tourists alike is a boat cruise to the Liana Pillars.
The Liana Pillars are located on the right bank of the Liana River, 200 kilometers up from Yakutsk. These natural sculptures are a chain of giant rocks about 40 kilometers long, composed of yellow limestone. Sheer cliffs that show up unexpectedly among the vast expanses of dense forests. For hundreds of millions of years, a tireless and indefatigable natural sculptor created this stone miracle. Water, wind, heat and cold were his tools. And now you can see these fabulous images which stand more than a hundred meters high and stretch into the distance for tens of kilometers. The Lena Pillars are not just a pile of rocks, but rather an open air museum to the geological history of the earth. The first traces of skeletal organisms were discovered here such as trilobites, that lived around 500 million years ago. Under the influence of nature's external forces, the rocks have acquired peerless shapes. If you want to imagine it in your head, picture this. Shapes of people, fragments of fairy tale scenery, towers of ruined castles, arches, and columns. Here is how the exiled Decembrist Alexander Bestuzhev described the pillars. At night time, when the waters are as smooth as mirrors, and the sky is as clear as water, you pass these rocks moulded by a bizarre natural play in the shape of long colonnades, minarets, and bell towers. The holy silence surrounds this virgin creation and your soul merges with the wild and majestic surroundings. When climbing up these giant rocks, it is not difficult to feel like a bird soaring over the wide valley of this magnificent and calm river. The Lena Pillars become especially fascinating and mysterious in the light of the sunset. They resemble giants who have come out to the river to drink its water and watch the vessels floating down by their feet. The river widens near the pillars and is home to many islands here. The land on these islands is used for haymaking and grazing. When the water level drops, you can cross many of the islands and put horses and cows out to pasture. Local people pick wild onions and salt them for the winter. If you are fortunate enough to take a tour down the Sinyaya River, these also contain pillars that rival the more famous Lena pillars in terms of beauty. The Sinyaya River is a left tributary of the Lena, and its mouth is located next to the Lena pillars. 
The Sinyaya River pillars are not as high as the Lena pillars. They rise above the river no more than 100 meters. However, they create a huge impression, especially in those places where their vertical walls descend directly down into the river. The Sinyaya River is a real tourist pearl, alluring and difficult to access. Stone figures of complex shapes pepper the river at every turn. The name of the Sinyaya River comes from the Evenki word Shinya, which translates as fish river. Grayling, perch, pike and other fish species come here to spawn. Some of these fish even remain over the winter period in deep, unfrozen pits of the river. The mouth of the Sinyaya River is shallow, with a number of rapids upstream, which you can reach only by helicopter or by the Villioi path. This path is not easy, but it will reward those who walk it with awe-inspiring views, even for those who have seen much during their lifetime. Nowadays, the staff of the National Park construct log cabins and parking lots along the path where tourists can take shelter from bad weather and familiarise themselves with the life of the indigenous people. The Liana and Sinyaya pillars are nowadays part of specially protected natural areas. A nature park named the Liana Pillars was founded in 1995. Thousands of tourists from around the world come to admire these extraordinary masterpieces of nature that deserve to be considered World Heritage Sites. Indeed, in 2009, the Liana Pillars Nature Park was included in the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The Liana Pillars Nature Park became the first area of environmental tourism in the Republic of Sakha, and today it leads in terms of number of visitors. The ecological trail to the Leana Pillars begins at the sculptural complex Host of the Mountain. For the Saka people, everything in nature has its own inner soul, known as the spirit of Ichi. The stone Host of the Mountain represents the spirit of the Leana Pillars, and as such, 
tourists undergo a rite of purification before climbing up the pillars. The banks of the Leana River are very sparsely populated. The Tiger stretches for hundreds of kilometers between villages. Closer to the city of Yakutsk, you can feel life getting busier. The sight of villages becomes more frequent. Motorboats and large passenger ships travel up and down the river. Most of the villages on the banks of the Leana River have been there since the state postal service first passed along the Relena River by crossing the winter ice. Many of these villages do not have roads leading to them, so can only be reached by boat in the summer or across the ice during winter. The small villages have gradually emptied over time, and now horses take shelter from the heat and gadflies in the houses. Instead of local people, only the wind moves through these rooms. The Yakut horse is a unique animal, hardy and unflashy. Nobody grazes horses here, and there are no stables built for them either. They have a semi-wild lifestyle. They locate food by raking the snow with their hooves, even during severe frosts. The Tukulan is one of the most incredible natural phenomena on the banks of the Leana River. Translated from the Evenki language, Tukula means sand. A huge sand dune more than 300 meters long is located not far from the Leana Pillars. It has been created by sand blown from the riverbank cliffs. Sands here gradually reach the forest, creating a piece of real desert. This is not surprising, as central Yakutia has around 350 millimetres of precipitation per year, and the vegetation survives solely thanks to permafrost. Permafrost does not allow soil moisture to penetrate deep into the ground, and so there is enough water for plants to grow. This magnificent hill, 50 meters tall, is not the only dune in the Lerner Valley. Other dunes can be seen downstream and in places where the slopes of the pillars contain sand supplied by the bed of the ancient river.
Just downstream from the sand dune is the mouth of the Potama River, where the first herd of forest bison in Russia were introduced. The animals were brought from Canada in 2006 and released into large areas. The forest bison is a subspecies of the North American bison and a close relative of the prairie bison. Bison lived on the territory of Yakutia during the Age of the Mammoths and disappeared around 10,000 years ago. The forest bison is an endangered, especially protected species and is listed in the International Red List of Threatened Species. Thanks to the measures taken, bison have been preserved in national parks and reserves of the United States and Canada. The newcomers have adapted well and delivered offspring in their second year. Now there are already seven calves in the herd. If their reproduction continues successfully, it can then be declared that this animal, once an extinct species along with the musk ox, has returned to Yakutia. dams, hydroelectric power plants or other barriers on the beautiful Leana River, which flows along its natural course in the same way it has done for millions of years. You can still drink straight from it, scooping the water up from the river with your palm whilst admiring the amazing Siberian sunsets. And let's keep it that way. After all, if these stone giants stand guard over Siberia, preservation and peace will always reign over this land. Mm -hmm.